dear friends in my short lecture i had given a brief introduction for the lecture which i am going to share today after listening to that short lecture three of my res- friends re- responded like this one friend said this short lecture has created a thirst of knowledge in me jnana daha tell me when you are going to quench that thirst an friend of mine said i listen to your lecture but that has created many more questions in my mind i am eagerly awaiting as to at least some of my questions are going to be answered in the next episodes and the third person asked that he was very curious to know or listen to the further explanation of the topic where i had left last time you may recall that we had recognized in the last lecture that amidst the constantly changing phenomenal world which we are perceiving every moment of our life there is one thing which is non changing there is one factor which is the which by itself is non changing but is the basis for me to perceive all the changes what i am seeing in the world and i am not able to experience that non changing entity as it is it requires certain preparation and then the scriptures have given certain paths sadhana marga to experience or to have a glimpse or to at least conceive what that non changing entity what i mentioned before principally there are three paths which are prescribed the path of action that is the karma marga then the path of devotion bhakti marga the third is path of knowledge gyana marga out of these three i will take up this gyana marga for our discussion and which leads us to understand clearly the principle of non changing entity what we earlier recognized now that non changing entity is called principle of sat that means it is a never existing principle now question is i will not be able to readily understand let alone experiencing that is very difficult to conceive as to what it is and its nature now that entity is termed as god the reality the truth brahman consciousness atman these are the words which denote that non changing entity now we are, we are very eager we would like to know that entity we would like to know what god is because our immediate methodology is that we would like to apply the same scheme or the method as to how i perceive and understand this phenomenal world outside but here in this case it doesn't work because god or reality which we are talking about now is not an object of perception because the world of objects are perceived by the three instruments called body mind and intellect god or this awareness or this consciousness is beyond the domain of this body mind and intellect complex in fact it is in the presence of this entity which makes the body mind and intellect to perform their functions it is something like my eyes can see many things in the world outside but my own eyes cannot see my own eyes my eyes cannot see my own eyes this is how the case of atman or the lord residing in me is now this non changing entity as i said is called by many words brahman or atman and this is the word used in the technical parlance of vedanta now this god 
entity cannot be perceived cannot be defined by words because god is infinite ananta upanishad tells satyam brahmam satyam gyanam anantam brahma or sat or this consciousness is of the nature of satchit ananda therefore upanishad declare a methodology or upanishads give indicators to to perceive or to understand the concept of god what does it say the upanishads tell because you know god is inf- infinite words are finite therefore the finite words cannot define the infinite then how to know god how to know existence of god now what is prescribed is the unknown has to be known to begin with through the known now this brahman or atman is beyond this domain of space and time therefore you cannot adopt the same methodology as i said earlier to understand the objective knowledge of the world around in fact the very world what i am seeing around itself is mithya the famous doctrine of advaita philosophy is brahma satyam jagan mithya this declares there is only one thing which is real there is only one principle which is non changing eternal all pervading and that is brahman and the world what i see around is mithya is unreal it is a projection on the substratum it is a world is this nothing but superimposition on the substratum called brahman in fact the world has no reality on its own it is the world which is projected by the mind so this is the declaration of the upanishads now with this background what we'll do is we'll go into a little more exploration of the self discovery or the path of self inquiry or the means to get self knowledge let us start the journey in this way we know that all of us in the world seek happiness that to happiness without any tinge of misery whatsoever this is one aspect second aspect is we love many things in the world we also hate many other things in the world now why do we love certain things and why do we hate certain things because we love those things which gives me happiness i love a thing a more than the thing b because the a the object a gives me more happiness therefore the degree of love depends on the degree of happiness what i get from that object in any case happiness is the cause of love this is one aspect second aspect is we there is a gradation of love some objects we love more some objects we love less but the supreme love i have is towards myself this is a very startling statement the most loved ones amongst many things in the world is loving myself this, this is the harsh reality harsh truth now the why do we why do all of us seek happiness in the world because we we cannot see something of which we are not familiar because our very nature is happiness therefore and with no exception all of us crave for experiencing that happiness in fact happiness is not a state to be gained it is the other way what is that which is preventing me to experience that happiness only that has to be removed then what thereafter what remains is the happiness now the very fact that all of us crave for happiness means that we are familiar with it there is an intense that is a intrinsically i am the i am in the nature of love i am in the nature of bliss that is the reason we seek all of us without exception seek happiness now 
let us also have one more analysis of the three states of consciousness which all of us go through with no exception all over the world one is jagrat swapna sushupti waking state dream state and deep sleep state analysis of deep sleep state and under, understanding the underlying principle is very interesting the sleep is a state where the mind is at rest during deep sleep state i am not aware of the world what the world is i am not aware of my own ego my own entity my own position everything is absent there because there is something like there is no mind operative during sleep now the existence of the world is perceived only through the mind when the mind is at rest therefore the world cannot be perceived and what is the by product of that i feel very happy that is why when we have a good sleep and get up in the morning we say i am very fresh i had a very sound sleep i had an undisturbed sleep i felt very happy about that in fact nobody hates sleep because that sleep gives me ananda gives me that happiness now during sleep therefore with no world present and no knowledge of who i am i have the glimpse of happiness then does it mean that in order to have the glimpse of the reality glimpse of the source of happiness i should sleep no it only gives an indicator during sleep one must recognize that i am not even aware of of myself means i am not even aware that i am happy during sleep it is only after i get up i i gain the experience that i slept well and i was happy with that now interesting dimension is how to experience that source of happiness that source of bliss in the jagrat state when i am awake when i am awake i must be able to have the experience of that reality called atman or brahman how do i do that in fact this is where the sadhana works through sadhana what is it i have to do i must explore as to what my real nature is ravana maharshi's famous statement who am i this is the inquiry with which we have to start ravana tells when you get the clear answer to this question who am i and also you have the experience of this understanding then that gives you a realization of the self you will come to experience what the self is now as you know we are all familiar with the total identification of our body mind and intellect we think that i am we think that i think that i am the body i think that i am the mind i think i am the i am the intellect this is due to ignorance i have about myself in fact my body sense organs organs of action my mind my chitta my ahankara and the buddhi i am none of this in fact all these belong to me but i am not them therefore vedanta takes a beautiful methodology of rejecting our neti neti principle neti means na iti i am not this i am not this this is the principle it takes therefore what does it advise if you have to understand brahman you must understand first what is not brahman so you are the, the teaching is you are not the body you are not the sense organs you are not the organs of action you are not the chitta you are not the buddhi then if we negate all this question comes then what else is brahman what else is atman if you say that none of this is brahman none of this is you then what else you are in your real nature the answer is it is pure awareness it is that awareness which helps me to be aware of many things in the world including jagrats swapna and sushupti that is the real me and therefore the real me is consciousness real me is this awareness and the nature of that is satchit ananda in fact in advaita makaranda in a text he beautifully gives out this he says aham asmi sada bhami kadachit na aham priya na kadachit aham na apriya brahma eva mata siddham sachidananda lakshanam it says that i exist always i ever exist 
I shine always. Never do I dislike myself. Is it not? The most likable person is myself. Kadachit aham na apriyaha. I never hate myself. Most likable person is myself. Something like the what the what is the most desirable tune you like is your own tune. So they, therefore, the nature of Brahman is Sachidananda. I must be Sada Bhami. I have the awareness, consciousness that I am. I am present. I exist. Now, problem is okay. We have known my real nature, but I am not able to experience that. What is the reason? Reason is, unless I totally quieten my mind, I will not be able to get the glimpse of Brahman. There are only two ways. If the world I am able to, I am seeing, then I will not be able to perceive Brahman. If I am able to have a glimpse of Brahman, then I will not see the world. It is only one of the two. It is something like the Raju Sarpa Nyaya. By Ajnana, by ignorance, if I see the snake on the rope, that means in the evening when there is no proper light, the rope may resemble the snake in its shape. Therefore, when I see the rope, I don't see the rope as the rope, but I see snake in the rope. That is, the snake vision is superimposed on the rope. In fact, there is no snake at all, but the snake appears on the rope. So, when does the snake go? When I get the knowledge that it is rope, when it is not a snake, snake vision disappears and rope continues to appear to my vision. So, where did the snake come from? Where did it go? There is no question of coming and going. It is only a, in a projected vision of snake. Similarly, the world what I am perceiving now, why I am not able to see the non-changing factor in this moment is that this is a this is the projection of the mind. Therefore, as long as the mind is there, I am seeing the world. When I quieten the mind, when I make the mind nishans, then only I will have the possibility of seeing the glimpse, glimpse of Brahman. Now, how to make this world disappear? As to how to make the mind to lose its positioning now? We have to also understand mind should be placed in Brahman. Brahman is the source of bliss. Therefore, if I am able to get the through sadhana, the skill of placing the mind in its original base, that is Brahman, then I will be in constant bliss. Now, but unfortunately due to ignorance, mind emerges out or goes out from Brahman or Atman and goes out to seek the world of objects with the false notion that the objects give me happiness. Therefore, the teaching is make the mind to be in Brahman. We say Kutastha. As what Gita tells, Atma samstham manakritva na kinchi da Therefore, keep the mind in the Atman. If you do that, then the world disappears. You have the glimpse of Atman. Therefore, uh, with this, this gives a little more elaboration of the concept what we uh, were introduced last time. I know it's not easy to understand this, but let's make an attempt to munch whatever the things which I have, which we have discussed now. It, maybe it should be lead, it should lead to a little more clarity after that. Then, in, in in case if some of the people are interested, maybe I can take up one more session and then give little more clarity as to how to make this world which I am seeing to be dissolved, which makes way, which paves way for recognition of the Brahman within. Hari Om.